Sometimes people ask me, you know, whenever I give them these examples, why does Islam put the rules here that when you're changing money for money, why, did, why, what are the rules that it must be one-to-one, -one, okay, no surplus, okay, and it must be spot. Okay, why, why do we have these rules in Islam? Who would want to exchange like this for that? Like, who would want to, here's the hundred for hundred, okay? So to understand the importance of these rules, what you need to understand is that the all financial products, all the banking is based on they, them selling us money for money. Okay, all of the riba banking, the, the things that brought economy to the collapse were a result of, 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 of this tra transaction. Okay, when these people started exchanging money for money in unequal amounts. So how did they do these things? So let me give you a quick example. A miracle of this, uh, of this uh, rule. So for example, if you remember global financial crisis, okay? Global financial crisis. What, you, what people used to do is they would buy these homes, okay? They would buy these homes Okay, so let's say these homes were, I don't know, 100K. Okay, 100K. Okay, so they would buy banks, would sort of finance, they give a home loans to these customers. Okay, so what used to happen, so to, let's say to buy these three homes, let's say there's 300 homes or 1,000 of these homes, they would need, um, let's say, $1 billion. So all of these homes, to finance them, loans, it's a $1 billion, okay? $1 billion. Thousands of contracts, thousands of these things. Now, when they sell these things to the customers, okay? These are the customers, okay, here, okay? Because they give them what? Time. Where is this transaction? Here. Yeah. Because they give them time, what they ask in return? Surplus. So if you took a home loan for 100K, what are you going to return at the end? You're going to return 200. Okay, maybe more. Compound interest, okay? So what we have here, we have 2 billion that you're going to receive in profit. So we have a bank or organization issuing these home loans and sometimes in the future, what they're going to receive? They're going to du double the money, okay? That's just how banking works, basically. Why, but why didn't they just take, acquire the houses and then just sell the houses the way it's allowed? Well, they don't want to deal with these real things. They want to deal with money for money. And may, that, that's the whole thing, that they want to have a risk. They want to run away from the risk, from real things and everything else. So this is a riba mentality that penetrates everything else they do. Okay, so what they want is just to deal with money, money to money. And that makes their life much more easier. And you'll see how. So now, if you think about these things, what do we have here? What do we have here? We have a billion dollar worth of contracts. So these were not for, as you mentioned, they're not buying equity in the homes. What they were buying is simply they were, they were, they were issuing a loans, okay? So when you look at the bank, what did they spend here? What are these things? We have one billion, okay? We have one billion, okay? Now, let's say today is 2017, okay? All right, now what do we have here? We have two billions. And that's, let's say, 2030, okay? It's in 20 or so years. So now we have this bank. So what did I, did I calculate this? No, no, 2040, 2040, okay, let's say 2040, it doesn't matter. So now in 20 years or so, okay, what, what we have here is a cash flow coming here. Okay, so first of all, when you think about what is being exchanged here, okay, what are we exchanging? We are having, I give you this, you customers, I give you a billion dollar loan, you know, let's say collectively I'm now looking. 
And what are you paying me? Two billion. So we have, where is this money for money? Where is this? It's here. Okay. So somebody said, why Islam prohibits these things? You know, what's the problem? Money, give them a bit time, bit, you know, you make a bit of money. Okay. Now what's happening? Now these people, let me actually make it more simplified now. So, so think about all of these now hundreds and thousands of the customer. I will make them like into one sort of contract. So these organization, they look at, took at all of these contracts into one. Okay, so they took this contract into one, one billion dollar of these. So they call these CDOs, collateral debt obligations. Okay, they put it into, into something. Now this something, okay, it's, they made like a derivative, which is returning, okay, which, which is returning how much in future? Okay, in future this CDO is com coming with the with the with the cash flow of two billion, okay. So this CDO, okay, they call these derivatives, okay. They say, okay, in twenty years, this is what you're gonna make, okay. So what these guys bankers are doing now, okay, they take this thing, the whole thing, they put a little ribbon here, okay. All right, and they go to another bank. All right, so in their mind, how much they spend to make this little package? $1. They spend one billion dollar. They go to another bank. Okay, they go to another bank, and they say, "This little thing, okay, that we have here, will sell you for one point, let's say, three billion." And what's your benefit? You will get two billion. Okay? You understand? You, I come to you now and I say, I'm going to sell you this, this thing. You don't know what it is. Okay? It's some contracts. I'll sell you this for $1.3 billion. So what I'm saying to you, this is $1.3 billion thing, box. And how much you're going to make from this in next 20 years? $700 million. Wow. You see, I'm going to take something like that. And, and make, big banks. For no reason, you just make $700 million. You, make, you just need to wait now. Okay. And you say, and you ask these guys, how good is this? They say, well, we'll give you even the rating. We'll throw in the rating. It's they call it AAA or whatever, you know. It's a really nice thing. Okay, so they give it a rating, they call it this AAA, let's say, security. Okay, which means really, this, this is going to deliver this two billion. Okay, now, what starts happening is very soon, these bankers here, they started figuring out, I need a lot of people here to take the loans from me. So I can create this thing where I push one billion, you know, you, on one end you push one billion, on another end comes two billion product. And I sell it at a discount. So I'm selling you two billion dollar thing at a discount of what? 1.3. So you get this 1.3 and you wait for the cash flow, okay? It's a beautiful thing, it's, it's happening, okay? So you have all of these big, uh, institutions and investors who want, who love these kind of deals. You give me something 1.3 that will be tomorrow too, I love it. Okay? This gives incentives to these people to then find more people, give them loans to buy a house so that they can create shiny new products and they can sell. So for these guys from doing this, how quickly they can make $300 million? Just doing this, boom! They make what? 300 million. 300 million. You know? So they make this maybe in a year. Maybe in six months. Maybe less. Depends how fast they are. Okay? So this one, they, they make 300 million dollars for doing this. No risk, no nothing. They just get people in. They boom, sell them. And they pocket 300 million. Okay? So what started happening is... 
these people, bankers, started chasing anyone they could get to buy home. So they would go to this, there was a joke, you know, they would go to the waitress who earns like 20000 a year and they would sell them homes, half a million dollar homes, okay? And because she couldn't afford, they would give them the honeymoon rates, like virtually just paying the principal or a little bit of interest or sometimes even negative, just so that she can pay a couple of years, afford payment for just a couple of years. She can't afford that loan. But they would make it look as if she is paying on time. Where, let's say, payment should be 10000 let's say, or 5000 a month. They made it so that even if she's paying, paying 1000 for, let's say, first two, three years, she still is, in, you know, maintaining the loan properly. Okay? Why did they do that? They targeted these people because they are what they call subprime. Subprime. This is not a new normal food dog customer who can have a proper job and, you know, pay on time and really meet the obligations. But these people couldn't afford. A lot of these people couldn't afford these loans. They were given these loans because these bankers needed them in this package so that they can create a bigger contracts. And when they had these bigger contracts with more of these people, it looks good. Okay then they can sell these things to another person. And then what's, what, what started happening, okay, what started happening when these people took these loans, these uh, collateral debt obligations, so these derivatives, when they took over these contracts, what happens after a year or two? When this waiter, waitress defaults, cannot pay any more, what starts happening? It reduces the value of these $2 billion now. Suddenly she cannot... So these banks started selling these homes, getting rid of them. That started demolishing the prices of the homes. So the prices started going down rapidly. And more and more people started getting caught up in this. Because most of these people couldn't afford the loans, more of them were foreclosing and defaulting on their loans. And that dragged down the whole housing industry down. So as that started spiraling, this number now started dropping down. So not only did this go to 1.3, it started reducing. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get anything, not even a billion or a half a billion. Nothing. Because people didn't want continued repayments. Mm -hmm. The whole economy uh, 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 sort of shut down. Now, these people are very clever. They knew that that's going to happen. So what they did, they took insurance before that happened. So they went to these banks and they said, we have this beautiful product with $2 billion worth. These guys are going to buy it. They went to the insurance. They created these what they call swaps or insurance for this. So in case this go down, insurance actually pays me the difference. Okay, so imagine how clever that is. Normally, you cannot take insurance on a neighbor's house. Why you cannot take on someone else's property insurance? Because you have then vested interest for that house to burn down. But in finance, you can. You can actually bet or you can take insurance of some of these products, even when you don't have them, let alone when you have them. Okay, so you can do all of these crazy things. So they started creating these swaps, and they were all of these bankers and the groups who were actually putting the worst type of customer, toxic they create these toxic assets where they were putting the worst kind of customers here. Why? So that they can get to this beautiful number, sell it at a discount, and they say, and plus insure yourself. You understand? You understand? So you have people who made a billion dollars just on betting on these things. And imagine, so this lose the value, you know, this house burns down, I, I profit because I was betting the right way. You understand? So this sort of system where incentives you as a participant in economy are removed from the reality of economy. Whole economy goes down. The house burned down. These contracts, you cannot make a payment. People defaulting, everything going down. But you are benefiting. You see, the whole system of incentive 
how disconnected you are. Everything is burning down, going down, crushing around you, yet you are benefiting from every single disaster through these clever insurance schemes and, and all of these other products. What's at the heart of incentive where you can create monster and the cancer in the finance like this? What's at the heart of it? Ability to exchange unequal amounts of money. The fact that they could exchange two billion in future cash flow for unequal amount today, it's what creates the building block of entire cancer cell, which is why in Islam you cut it in a root. You say money to money, money to money, must be on the spot and no delay and no surplus. Here we have two for 1.3. You understand? Mm. Two, two f exchange for 1.3. Mm. It's there is delay, and there is a surplus. There is a difference in them. They are not one to one. Mm. So when Islam puts these rules, they are rules of miracle. These people, when they regulate Wall Street and they have books like this to regulate, you remove just this. You just implement this prohibition. You don't need to regulate them. Let them do whatever they want. Just say, when you do this, one-to-one. One. Same way, those insurances, you know, somebody, you know, these guys, when they take insurance, they say, we'll pay 50 million insurance. What's the problem there? You then pay 50 million, and how much money are you going to get from insurance? Maybe a billion. Again, unequal exchange of money for money. You understand? So, so Islam... When it treats, and this is the miracle of rules of riba, when Islam treats a problem, it treats it at such a depth that you can't, you can't build a rubbish system that, that, that destroys people's life. So when we see these rules, we should embrace this rule. We should love it because this is Sharia. It comes from uh, somebody who created us, who created this, who knows what's best for us. So when we... When, when that someone, when that Sharia, when that Islam says this is a war against Allah and his messenger, when you're profiting from this here, it's a war because the consequences are massive when people start exploiting. So that's why the whole issue of riba, it goes against a uh, whole mutual cooperation of the, as a society. You see, you created incentive where we can now put people in a in a such an unfortunate position. We can take advantage of them. Uh, we 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 exploit those people who need to be protected. So, so this whole system destroy partnership and mutual cooperation inside. Give, gives these incentives where people are betting against other people, destroying relationships, destroying the lives, and destroying the whole economy. So when we think about these issues, and we should really learn to appreciate uh, uh, all beautiful things in Islam.